Hello everyone, welcome back to this series of videos where I'm explaining you my process making a small isometric scene in Blender. Now let's start with the real modeling. You will see that there is no complicated modeling in this scene. I've chosen to make an environment with only simple objects, so even if you're a beginner you can do the same. My style is pretty simple, what usually brings life into the scene is just the amount of details. Here I'm adding details to the window clock using basic scale cubes. It's not worth taking time to detail them because they are really small in the scene and they are flooded with the window's light. When I'm satisfied with the window clock, I will duplicate it and use it as a smaller clock. I'm replacing all the clocks block out on the walls with clones of my new clock. I'm making different size clocks. It's a good habit to put the same object types on the same layer. To do this, just select the object you want to put in the same collection, press M and select new collection. When you want to apply the same modifiers to many objects, you can select them all and use Ctrl plus L to open the link panel. In this panel you can choose the copy modifiers option. In this scene I am mostly using two or three iteration subdivision, which does not increase dramatically the quad numbers. But when you have detailed modeling, you really don't want the subdivision to be too high. I now want to make a big vintage clock. It's probably the least simple object, but it's still very easy to do. To make it, I start from a plane, I add some loops and tweak the vertices to get the shape I want. When working on complex objects, you probably want to use blueprints, photos of front and side of the object. But in this video I googled some clock before, so I was sure I wouldn't need the photos for such a simple object. You can see that I duplicated the outside edges to make the border of the clock. It's not a common way to model, but since I'm not working for a game asset, I don't have constraints. I can model it in many pieces if I want, and I don't mind the number of faces or the topology. I just want it to look good in the scene. I generally prefer to use a smooth cube than a cylinder for cylindrical objects. Smoothing a cube with subdivision modifier doesn't give you a perfect cylinder you get something more stylized, which is what I'm looking for. As you can see here, I isolated in a local view all the stairs elements with forward slash to work more efficiently. I'm now adding details to the stairs. I will bevel the stairs railing simply by adding some loops and subdivision. To make the stairs post, I use a curve path that I rotate at 90 degrees on the Y axis. Then I add a geometry profile to it in the object purposes panel and I rotate with Ctrl T each point of the path for a few degrees, starting from the bottom. To get the correct twist, you need to select the bottom point, rotate it, then add the next point to your selection and rotate them, and so on until the top. It's hard to tell in the camera preview for now, but you can see in the working preview viewport that the edges on the stairs railing are catching light. This is exactly what we're looking for when we are beveling our object. We still have a good amount of placeholders to replace in the scene, but you can see in the camera viewport that just by duplicating the clock, we have already filled the environment with a good amount of details. I will now detail the little robot in the center of the scene. I'm duplicating his body and risk 
scaling it to get his screen face. Then I convert it to mesh. It was already a mesh, but converting it is a fast way to apply all modifiers to it. In the front view, I select the robot's face, and in edit mode, I select a few quads that will be the eyes. I duplicate and separate them, and I add a solidify modifier and a subdivision one. Again, I'm just using curves and cubes to make the robot's details. I love making small robots because you can easily get something cool without a long and complex organic modeling. Having a robot clockmaker also fits the theme of the scene pretty well. I've been speaking a lot of subdivision modifier. As I told you, it can greatly increase the amount of polygons in the scene, so you might want to check the poly count in the bottom right corner just to be sure you don't have 20 million polygons in your scene. If you have too many quads, you might really want to decrease your subdivision iterations. If the polygon count is not displayed in the bottom right corner, just right click in the corner and check scene statistic. To model the first arm, I'm just using the usual cubes and profile curves. When I add a geometry profile to a curve, I usually rotate the curve point to 45 degrees. To do so, I select the curve point in edit mode, I open the transfer panel with N, and I change the mean tilt at the bottom of the panel to 45. For the second arm, I will join the first arm's elements with Ctrl G, duplicate this new group and scale it minus 100% on the X axis. I could have used the mirror modifier, but I don't want both arms to be exactly the same and have the same rotations. I will now add details to the clockmaker's desk. My idea was to have clocks part all around the desk. Since there won't be any camera zoom, I don't really need to make new or more detailed elements. I can just duplicate clocks parts, tweak them and move them around. When placing items in the scene, the fact that they look good is more important for me than the fact that their placement makes perfect sense. Of course, if I'm modeling a kitchen, I will mostly put kitchen related props in it, but if I feel that a giant tree in the middle of the scene makes it visually better, I will put it there. I wanted to make a new clock variation for the last three clocks. I used elements of the other clocks to make it, just adding a new profile curve for the new clock's body. I don't like to have too many elements looking the same, but the clock behind the chair is pretty hidden and the clock near the window will be smaller, so no need to make new variations. When placing items in the scene, I often rotate objects so they catch the light in the best possible way. For example, if an object has a very detailed face, putting some light on it will be more visually pleasant than keeping it in the shadow. I'm almost done with the modeling, I just have the chair and a few details like vegetation to finish. You can see that adding a border to the chair's back is a really simple way to get a nice light emphasis on it. To make the chair's armrest, I'm using the same technique as previously. I start by duplicating the chair's back, I rotate and scale it. I separate an edge loop from this object and convert it to a curve. I then add a geometry profile to this curve and tweak some points to get the shape I want. To make a pot, I start from a cube and remove its top face. I then extrude the top edges, scale them down and add a solidify modifier and a subdivision one. Don't forget to smooth the faces in the right click panel. Then I make thinner leaves for the pot. Simply by scaling them and increasing the simple deform modifier's angle, I get really different leaves.
The modeling part is now over. Thank you for watching. Please feel free to post your questions in the comments. I'll be happy to respond to everyone. In the next video, we will add all materials to the object, so feel free to follow NVIDIA channel if this is something you want to see.